Hey guys. Okay. Wednesday, March 11th. It's a good day. Um, just wanted to come on here. I haven't made a, vi a video in a few days. Just wanted to say that I love you. And it's another day. Take it one day at a time, okay? Right now, it's really easy to get bogged down by all of the coverage going on in different countries, what country, what different countries are doing to uh, contain this virus. But that's not where our strength lies. That's not where our hope lies. Our comfort is in the Lord, okay? I don't mean for that to sound so scripted, um, but it's true, okay? One one thing that I can that I can see is true right now is things are being people are being separated. And what I mean by that is you're going to make the decisions when something big like this on a global scale occurs. Naturally, you make the decisions that are closest to your heart. Like you make quick decisions, but but they're the decisions that you would do without any contemplation, without, you know, thinking about it, without trying to feign any kind of one way or the other. But there's a real big separation between those who, those who, who trust in the Lord and those who don't. Those who don't trust in the Lord, they're real, real, real heavy on uh, a bunker, on food, supplies, water, um, cars, uh, ATV vehicles, gasoline, toilet paper is a big one right now. That's, <laughs> that's funny. I've seen there's like toilet paper apocalypse. A lot of people going for that. And, uh, those who trust in the Lord with everything, they prepare. We still prepare. We still get food. We still get food storage. We still get water. We still do those things, but we don't rely so heavily on that because we know that after this world, we're going to go to be with him. You know, whether he's going to rapture us up out of here or not, uh, our life belongs to those around us. And what I mean when I say that is right now, the big separation's coming. Those who trust in the Lord and those who don't. But some people, they really, some people are still kind of, uh, they're really confused and they don't know which way to lean and they hear one thing being said on one side of the fence and one thing being said on the other side. And those are the people that we got to, we got to, we got to get them, man. And those are, it's not your job to get everybody in the world. It's your job to be an encouragement to those who are in your circle and to be a standard in a time like this, because a true believer isn't going to be, is not going to be fearful and overreacting and anxious, uh, just, you know, afraid, running here and there and not knowing what to do. A true believer knows that the Lord is coming. These things were prophesied to happen. They're going to happen. And we will, we will be the good to the very end for those around us. If you keep your cool and you keep your calm and you love those people around you, <clears throat> people notice that because they see one side of the fence that people are like running for the hills and running for this or that survival type thing. And, and while my website is all about survival, a lot of it uh, for the natural stuff, food, water, supplies, outdoor stuff, camping gear, um, tents, all that stuff. That stuff is important. It's important to have those skills, but it is eternally important to have a spiritual survival, and that is only in the Lord. I'm a little bit rambling here, but I hope I hope this makes some sense to somebody. Hope somebody sees it. Uh, and if it helps you, hit the like button, comment. Uh, Nancy, thank you for always encouraging. That's very wonderful. Uh, comical Canadian, you as well, thank you. I love you guys. Don't lose your cool, all right? Because there's people around you who are watching you. And there's those people who 
you may have to lead, you know, kind of, not like uh, lording over them, but like you may have to help them understand what's going on. And not in any kind of capacity that you're better than them or anything, because we're not. Nobody, not one person on this planet is better than another person. Sometimes we're put in positions where we, uh, where we watch over other people, congregations, uh, stuff like that. Like the Pope, he's in a position, you know, where he's over a big old church. And he's over a lot of people. He has a lot of influence, and that's a heavy position. But whenever you're in positions like that, the Lord gives you capacity for those type of things, and it's very important. Whatever whatever walk of life you're at, or whatever um, kind of position you're in in the hierarchical system in the society, whatever position you're in, you're given that capacity. To, you're given everything you need, all the skills and capacity and the love and the patience and everything that you need to fulfill that position that you're put that you're put in. Because the Lord is who sets up kings and brings down kings. We find that out in First Daniel, or we find it out in the first few chapters of Daniel, where King Nebuchadnezzar he uh, really gets put in his place. I love you guys. This uh, video is going on a little long, six and a half minutes. I'm gonna cut it off right here. Draw closer to the Lord, because right now the position that we're in, you guys know that Revelation, <clears throat> I found this out recently, Revelation, which is Revelation, not Revelations, I know that's a, a common misnomer, but Revelation is, in the Greek word, is the apocalypse. Um, I don't remember how to say it in Greek, but it's very it's very phonetically similar to our English word apocalypse and it means the unveiling and the first verse in Revelation the first chapter first verse is it's the revelation of Jesus Christ so it's the re revelation of Christ in you um, why did I say that I'm not sure um, or I guess yeah the apocalypse everything that's going on just trust in the Lord draw draw close to him because in the time that we're in right now He's opening more and more, and he's revealing more and more in the scripture and in the closet. Whenever you go in there and you seek him for yourself, he's, he's opening himself up. So just more and more and more. And that's going to make you jealous because you'll see people around you maybe who are doing that. It says in scripture that um, the Lord would show mighty works and all these things, all these wonderful miracles through the Gentiles to provoke Israel to jealousy you know because we have a relationship with with the one true God the only God and it would provoke Israel to jealousy to want that and in the time that we're in that holds true and you'll find out for yourself if you get into the word and you start reading if you've never picked up a book in your life I mean if you've never picked up the Bible in your life especially if you've never picked up a Bible in your life I think you're in for a real treat. Um, just let it be heartfelt. Just be, just do what you're gonna do. Uh, make a decision and just do it. Okay. Don't don't feign like you're some holier than thou, or don't act like you're this or that. Do what you want to do. If you're gonna serve the Lord, do it. If you're gonna get to know Him, do it. If you don't want to, say to hell with it, and don't. But make a decision, uh, because I think that's very important to our Father, is to make a decision. In fact, in, in Revelation it says, and we all know the scripture, I would that ye be hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. Our Father likes people who are passionate one way or the other. He doesn't like it when we're, when we're warm, when we're kind of right in the middle. Uh, he really loves to see us going wholeheartedly into things because he loves seeing his creation like that, not feigning some belief or feigning some status that we're trying to pull off in front of other people. I love you guys, and the, the purpose of this video, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about doing another video on the book Song of Solomon, and it is a love letter from Christ well, it's a love letter between Christ and the church, his bride, 
his bride being the church and Christ, it's a love letter between them, between you two. And it's very important <clears throat> that you see it that way because that's the way he sees you. And if you don't see the way he sees you, you're not going to think you're worth it. You're not going to think you're beautiful and all these comely features about yourself. And uh, what we know about people is if you think you're trash, you will treat other people like trash. But if you know how worthy you are and how, how special and imperative you are to being in God's kingdom, then you'll treat other people that way. And other people will be loved because you know that you're loved by the Father. I keep going down a couple of different tangents here, guys, but that's because all these little things here that I'm saying are very, very paramount to understand. <clears throat> And they're very important, especially in the times that we're in right now. I love you guys. Have a wonderful Wednesday. See ya.